Good morning, everybody. How are we all? Are you all all right? It's very lovely to have you here. And um, what would be good this morning is not only if you say hello on our live feed, but if you can tell me if you can hear me and see me okay, just simply because I'm using new software at the moment. I trialed it last week, but I'm very much hoping that it's going live. So uh, pop a hello in the chat and uh, just let me know that you're watching and everything is fine and dandy. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's just say uh, some good mornings to people who are in the room. Corrine, uh, Joanna, Jill, Sally, Hilary, Roz, Rosie, Ali, Sharon, uh, Pauline, Rosemary, uh, Jane, Anne, uh, who else have we got? Lou, um, another Anne, Roz, um, and lots of people saying that they can hear me loud and clear. Um, Maggie's saying it's a miracle I found you. <laughs> I'm guessing uh, Facebook is uh, proving to be a bit tricksy this morning. Uh, Sue, good morning, Sue. Uh, Vivian, um, lots of people saying that that they can uh, see me and hear me and people saying that they've got snow and ice. Our snow's almost gone. Boo hiss. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, we've got a bit of rain this morning and it's a bit grim and grey and greasy. So we'll we'll talk about art instead. That's uh, much better. Who else have we got in the room? Uh, Pauline saying that I'm now in sync. So just in case you're wondering what she's talking about, her problems with my old software, with my mouth and the sound not working in sync. And that wasn't just me. That was actually the software. Uh, Rabina, Brenda, Gary, good morning. Oh, two Garys in the room. You wait for Garys and two come lo along at once. Mr. Templeman, good morning. Uh, Jeanette, Barbara, Steph, Denise. Oh, Denise is in the room. Hello, lovely. Uh, Jennifer, uh, Sylvia, um, Anne. Uh, my apologies, uh, Barbara, if um, if I leave anybody out. Good morning, Caroline. If I do mean um, leave anybody out, I do apologise. Your lovely messages come through so, so fast that sometimes it's uh, tough to, to see your names appear. Now, I'm being very rude this morning. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Ali Board. I'm a mixed media artist, art tutor and author. And every Tuesday at 10 o'clock, I bring you Technique Tuesday. Now, uh, pre-lockdown, because that's how we describe our world now, isn't it? Pre-lockdown and post-lockdown. Uh, Pre-lockdown, I used to record them and put them out and then I'd get back to their comments later. But since uh, March last year, I have been bringing them live from the studio and uh, whilst that's not an anniversary necessarily to celebrate, that uh, has been almost a year now of coming to you live. And what a lovely thing it has been for me too. So how does Technique Tuesday work? Um, I take the random thoughts that are going on in my head or possibly something that you have commented on or asked me and I turn it into a live broadcast. You might be watching this via my website, in which case this is now pre-recorded. You might be watching this via my YouTube channel, which again, of course, that's pre-recorded. So uh, because as this broadcast goes out, it is live via my Facebook page. What I tried to do is I tried to read your comments as they come in and then answer them, or we can have just a bit of a chat. I know it's the weirdest kind of chat because you're all kind of faceless entities out there and uh, you're talking to me uh, virtually, but I do like to have a, a chat with you every Tuesday morning, answer any questions that I can, and uh, we just have a, a bit of a warm hug of a moment. Now, who else is in the room that I haven't said good morning to? Good morning, Rona, Sally, good morning, uh, Patricia, <laughs> Lynn, good morning, B, Julie, Hilary, uh, Anne, uh, Mavis, Janice and lovely Rachel is there too. Good morning all of you, you are all astonishingly welcome. So what am I going to do today? Now, last week you may or may not have seen, good morning Gwenda, you may or may not have seen that uh, I was talking to you about black watercolours. Now if you haven't seen that post it might be useful for you to see it uh, because this one will make more sense. If you would like to see that, pop over to my website page alisonseaboard-fineart.co.uk and navigate your way to my blog and that's where you will find last week's Technique Tuesday. Now, if you sign up for my newsletter, you also get that blog delivered straight to your inbox 
all you need to do just to make sure that arrives because you might be out there going well I'm on her mailing list and I don't get it delivered it might just be because you haven't got me as one of your contacts so it might go into spam so in your contacts just put downendfarmstudio at gmail.com and you should find that it's delivered so for any reason you miss it you get it delivered straight into your inbox and that way you don't have to rush about the internet trying to find it. Tara's in the room as well. Good morning. Uh, people finding me on their tablets. Good morning, Mandy. Uh, Diana is saying snowy again in Glasgow. And Carolyn is saying good morning to you. You are all very welcome. Jane, good morning. Now, um, we now have, with the Posh New software, we now have two overhead cameras. Now I have to uh, click about, so you're gonna have to bear with me today, not that you're guinea pigs or anything like that. So we have the usual overhead camera, so you can see uh, my little magpie uh, drawing uh, in there, and uh, a few bits of equipment, all of which I will explain later. But I'm gonna take you to the snazzy new close-up camera. Let's show you this, look at that. I've got it just trained on a piece of paper at the moment. Now there's no sense of scale, is there? But if I stick my finger in, look how close up we can get with that camera. So anything, good morning Elaine, uh, good morning Jean, good morning Mick, um, and Roz is saying that she likes the chicken behind me. Um, so you can see that anything that you want to see in extreme close up, or anything that I think, goodness, that would be really, really useful if you saw the marks that I'm making, I can swing that camera into shot and you'll be able to see it really, really close. Oh, I've just seen, I'm just gonna take you back to face on camera. Um, because my dad is in the room this morning. Good morning, dad. Now, my dad doesn't pop up on Facebook very often. So uh, take this opportunity to say hello to my lovely dad. So that's Mike, uh, for those of you uh, that don't know. Right, let's take you back to the overhead shot. Now, this is uh, a magpie that I have drawn out ready for you. Ali D's in the room. Everyone's saying uh, good morning to my dad, which is very sweet of you all. Now, if you want to know where I found this photograph, if you go over to the blog after the broadcast, just give me a little bit of time to get it, uh, the video uploaded onto the blog page, but I have provided you with a link to this photograph. Uh, that uh, is, uh, I got it from Pixabay, from the Royalty Free website, and I've given you a few instructions about uh, how you can thank the photographer for that. So uh, over on the blog later, and you'll also see uh, how I make reference to how I used this line drawing in another painting that I did called One for Sorrow. Now, <laughs> Ginny has just said, oh heck, can you paint two magpies, please? I'm a bit superstitious. <laughs> Okay, well the good news is, Ginny, that if you go over to the website, I've put my other painting up on there too, so there will be two. It's lucky I'm not superstitious uh, at all, really. So uh, we'll just do the one today. Um, oh, you are all sweet, all saying good morning to my dad. Um, I've drawn it out ready just so that uh, we can kind of make a bit of a shortcut. Now there are two things that I'm gonna use today. I'm gonna use a waterproof sketching pen. Uh, which is this little number here. Uh, that is a Pigma Micron 0.3. This is in black. And I'm gonna do a little bit of sketching with that. And then I am going to add into that some of the Schmincke Super Granulating Watercolor that I talked about last week. Now this is the Galaxy Black. Now because we have the super close up for, um, camera, I could have done with this last week, couldn't I? I could have done with learning the software a little bit faster. If I pop that into the super close up camera for you and move it over, there you can see very, very clearly the two pigment numbers that we have. So that's PBK11 and PB29. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about at all, you do need to read that blog post and it will make it super clear. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but for those of you that were watching last week and have maybe done a little bit of homework from the point of view that you've gone back through your blacks and worked out what it is that you've got and what you haven't got, 
you will know that PBK11 is our Mars black pigment and PB29 is our ultramarine pigment. Okay, so those are the two that we are going to be using. Now what I'm going to do, uh, actually we'll leave that, I'm going to roll my sleeves up for starters because I wore bell sleeves this morning and what a daft thing to do when you've got a demonstration because you just drag it through your paint. Uh, in true glamorous fashion, I've already um, dropped Marmite down my front this morning and had to very quickly wipe that up before the broadcast. All good fun, isn't it? Now, I'm going to use the pen, but I'm going to show you the reference material first. Here is the photograph uh, that uh, I give you a link to on Pixabay. Isn't uh, he or she gorgeous? So you can see blues and greens. And yes, of course, you could do it in a lot more detail with a lot more colours than I'm going to do today. But I wanted to use a black because black has this um, kind of ridiculous thing that goes with it. To say that you shouldn't ever use black in a watercolour painting and that's just simply not true. So let's, uh, I've got my waterproof sketching pen here, so this is the 0.3, this is the, the Pigma Micron, I do like these pens at all, I use several different kinds of waterproof sketching pen, uh, this just happens to be one of uh, the ones that I particularly like. And what I'm going to do is put my glasses on and then over the top of my line drawing I'm going to do a little bit of sketching. So we're going to use that Morse code technique that I have talked about at length. Um, we might talk about Morse code again in a future broadcast if you would like to see that happen. Then stick it in the comments. I know mark making is something that a few of you struggle with. Several of you message me to say um, that you really struggle with the mark making it or you don't really understand what it means or you understand it in principle but um, in practice it makes it really difficult. I absolutely understand that. But here is my uh, Morse code technique for getting the texture of those feathers down. Now this would be a really good opportunity, would it not, to employ close-up cam. So there you go, you can see that camera uh, coming into shot for you can see how high-tech it is. I'm moving it with my hand But let's show you in that close-up camera just what I mean by that Morse code So it's little marks. It's dots and dashes. It's trying not to make anything too regimented we're gonna get the kind of um, little bits of detail in and uh, the dots to describe some of the feathers, to describe some of the uh, contours of the eye, for example. You don't have to fill it all in. It doesn't have to be a solid line. Let's move that uh, camera down a little bit and we can uh, pay attention to the feathers. So you can see I'm scribbling here and there. I'm doing longer lines where I want there to be a smooth contour. I've got that kind of handwriting going on, that way of interpreting things as I see them. And it doesn't mean that you have to copy the dot and dash method that I look. Invent your own little Morse code technique. Have a scribble on a piece of paper so that you can get those textures down with a pen and they don't look too regimented. Uh, so so let's just uh, see lots of people saying, oh, lots of people saying that they don't like magpies. Uh, lots of people also saying that they really struggle with the, the Morse code and they need to develop their um, scribbles a little bit more. Yeah, it doesn't come easy. It's not sort of a thing that you can magic overnight. It really isn't. You do need to practice it like anything else, like uh, brush strokes or brush loading or colour mixing. It does require a little bit of practice. Now Mick, our resident poet on Technique Tuesday, has uh, looks like he's come up with a gem. Old folklore says if you see a magpie alone, then you must ask after its spouse. A lone magpie is thought to be sad, hence the rhyme one for sorrow, two for joy. Nothing to do with the person seeing it, but about the lonely magpie itself. I love, what's not to like about Technique Tuesday? A sharing of knowledge and a sharing of ideas. What a lovely thing. Thank you, Mick. Uh, lovely to have you here as always. So now I can use a nice smooth line for those legs. Let's get those uh, legs in. Sorry, I kind of put it in a little bit of shadow there. Let's get uh, claws in. 
Are they claws or talons? I've never really got to the bottom of that. If it's anything like my chickens, they're definitely talons. And uh, let's get the top of that. Uh, well, it's a fence post in the photograph. Let's uh, let's show you the photograph again. Oh no, that's not the right one. Click on the right thing, Ali. Um, uh, there's the photograph. So you can see it was sitting on top of a fence post. I've kind of made it a bit more nondescript than that. Um, we can do a little bit of shading if we want to. We could do a little bit of scribbling to get legs in. Um, oh, my mum's in the room as well. Morning, mum. Oh, I've got the whole family. And uh, I know my husband's just behind me in the kitchen as well. So uh, everyone's tuned in today. Morning, mum. Everyone say hello to Liz. Morning, Liz. Famous for so many of my broadcasts. Let's get that Morse code at fence post in. And uh, then we will we'll switch back to the overhead camera so that you can kind of see it in all its glory. So there you've got um, a little bit of ink, a little bit of dog air as well. And, uh, and you can see it's a lot stronger now. Now those lines that I have put in are with a waterproof pen. And so they're going to stay put. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I thought I had a waterproof pen, but then I washed something over the top of it and the pen ran. You do need to let it dry. Sometimes when you get a waterproof pen, you will find that the ink in it is quite liquid. So let it dry first and then you shouldn't have any problems at all. I mean, to be honest, to be honest, what you could do is get a piece of watercolour paper and just a scribble across it with all your pens. What I tend to do is to write the name of the pen uh, on the piece of paper. Morning Fran, morning Maggie. Um, so I would get a piece of paper and I would write Pigma Micron 0 0.3 black and then I'd let those dry and then I'd spray them with a spray bottle or I'd get a wet brush and then you can see which one is definitely waterproof and which one isn't. And then, of course, not only that, you don't have to then annotate it again. What you've got then is actually the name of it written along the top. So uh, that is a, just a method that seems to work for me. Now, let's get on to the good stuff. Let's get rid. I've got my putty eraser there. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that pen. And let's bring in that paint. I need to take my glasses off because... <coughs> I'm at that age where everything is either too close or too far away. Now, like I said, this is your Galaxy Black Super Granulating Schmincke Watercolour. If you wanted to have a go at this, it doesn't mean you have to use this one. Don't think that your painting is going to be any less successful because you haven't got this paint. Of course it's not. Use a different black. If you've got PBK11 and PB29, so if you've got either a Luna black or a Mars black, and you've got an ultramarine, then mix them together first or have them separately in your palette. Or say to me, do you know what? I don't want to paint it in those colours. I fancy using black and violet. I mean, to be fair, I could have done that, couldn't I? Um, so use those instead. Interpret this as you see fit. Don't ever feel that you have to copy the artist whose tutorial you are following. All right. Morning, Andrea. <clears throat> um, so let's squeeze it out. Now, I'm going to just put a little bit. It's quite a strong colour. You get an awful lot for your money with these super granulating watercolours. It has to be said. Um, I think these are the 40, they're 15 mil tubes. Look. And they are artist quality, so you are going to get it for a long time. Now, I can just see, I've just got to uh, bypass to say a special hello. Um, uh, Jean, the lovely Jean is in the room, um, and her husband Terry as well. And I miss you guys. I miss seeing you up at Newark. This is the best we can do at the moment, unfortunately. But it's better than nothing at all, isn't it? So I'm going to reach for my kitchen roll. Uh, and get that prepared. I don't need two pieces. Let's shove that to one side. Let's knock all the texture out of that kitchen roll. Vicky is asking, uh, what was the pen? Um, don't forget, of course, you can go back. You can watch this video again over on the archived part of Facebook or the blog or YouTube. Uh, but Vicky, just for your information, this is a Pigma, P-I-G-M-A, Micron. This is a 0.3 and it's black, but it's certainly not the only waterproof pen that I use. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in my throat. I need a drink. Two seconds. Mm. 
slurp of drink, which I have just dribbled down my front. What's the matter with me today? Honestly, there we go. Got my super granulating watercolour squeezed out. And I have a selection of brushes here. These are the SAA's Imitation Sable brushes. I've been using these for two, probably three years now. Um, and I just think they are one of the best brushes on the market. They have all of the properties of a traditional sable. So they hold lots of water. They have a lovely spring to them. They come to a fine point, but without the price tag issues where natural sable is, of course, a very expensive product. Or if you have um, any ecological concerns, dealing with um, the treatment of animals, then you don't have to worry about that either because these are synthetic. So here I've got, I've got an eight, a six and a four. I'm not entirely convinced that I'm going to need all of those, but I've got them there for my at my disposal anyway. So I'm gonna use my size eight. And uh, what we're gonna do first is a background with this. Uh, my mum is saying that I need a bib with a gutter. <laughs> Which of course I had when I was a child. Um, so <laughs> yes, probably. I probably still need that bib, mum. It's really tragic, isn't it? Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of that colour and I'm going to make a puddle of it over here. Quite a deep, dark puddle um, because I want to create a background. Um, Ali D is saying she's got problems with it uh, dropping in and out. I don't think that's me, unfortunately. If anybody else is having problems with it dropping in and out, or equally if everybody is getting me coming through loud and clear, then just let Ali know just so that she knows it's the difference between either her internet or I know that it's mine. Tara is saying that I could borrow some of uh, her daughter Penny's uh, gutter bibs if I really wanted to. Right, anyway, moving on from the... <laughs> moving on from the gutter bib... What I'm going to do is a blending out technique. So uh, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to put paler colour where I want the magpie to be dark and darker colour where I want the magpie to be pale. Oh, everyone's really, really running with the bib thing, aren't they? <laughs> right, got my uh, picture up uh, in front of me. So let's get started, shall we? Now he's got uh, a white uh, bib at the front. So we're going to put a little bit of dark in under there and we're going to use that blending out technique. So we've put some colour down and we're going to use some water to fuzz out that background. Now because, as it says, this is a super granulating colour, you're going to get quite a lot of texture going uh, into that colour, but that's fine. And I'm going to tackle it just a little bit at a time today. Nice kind of low-key type of background, nothing too scary at all. Um, and then over the back, so it's really, really dark here, so I don't want my colour to be uh, too dark. And uh, I'm going to, well, where should I put that? I want it to be a little bit darker there, going up into pale. What I do love about these, um, <laughs> my dad is calling it Bibgate now. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness me, you have made me chuckle this morning. What was I saying? I got completely sidetracked by the bibs. Um, the super granulating colours do give a rather lovely smoky appearance, which I have to say I do like. Um, so you get that kind of vignette style. If you're wondering what watercolour paper I am working on, I'm working on a piece of Saunders Waterford today. Good, solid, staple Saunders Waterford. Uh, got that bit in there. Let's uh, do a little bit over the top of the head. So we'll put some colour in uh, over the top there. Wash my brush out and then use a little bit of water to fuzz that out. That is obviously the technical term. Um, and getting that in and using the kitchen roll just to fuzz that out. So we're giving our magpie a little bit of atmosphere. Now, one of the things uh, you don't want to forget when you're doing um, a background on something like this are the gaps in between legs. So it would be very easy, wouldn't it, to overlook that. So what I am going to take care of just very quickly are little bits of colour 
in there so you've got that backdrop on the magpie getting that in there now uh fence post i don't want to um add lots of color in this today because we are just working with the black uh yes jan this is a 300 gram 140 pound that i'm working with i mean it is just a little scrap of something that i found in my watercolor paper box it has to be said but i'm pretty sure from feeling it that it's 140 pound not um that i'm working on but you know for the purposes of today really doesn't matter uh, let's get some extra colour on the fence post. I'm going to probably change this later on, but we'll see what happens. What I am going to do is I'm going to encourage it to run here so that it gives that illusion of something a little bit more man-made. And you've got, again, a different mark being made where it runs down the paper. Let's drop. No, I don't want it to be too dark. Hmm. let's drop a little bit of dark into that bit there uh Gillian my brush is a size eight at the moment but again don't worry about that too much brush sizes are only relative to the range that they're in anyway and uh, I would say that it is a sort of medium to large ish size if I show you it up against uh, a pencil you can see that it's actually not that much bigger than the size of the head of a pencil and let's give that a little bit of a tap with the kitchen roll so that we can control the amount of moisture that's down there but i don't want to fuss about with it too much and then we need to dry it with a heat gun um, and i'm going to uh, put it on a low heat this i use a heat gun again don't kind of take anything from this i use a heat gun because it means that when i'm demonstrating particularly when i'm using a lot of technology i can still talk over the top of it and you can still hear me so if you've got a quick question for me get it into the comments and uh, i can answer it before um i crack on with anything else uh, Rosie is asking, will this uh, Galaxy Black that I'm using granulate if you mix it with another colour? Yes, absolutely. You'll still get a bit of granulation. Obviously, if you mix it with a really, really uh, hard colour, something like Prussian Blue, it might dull the granulation effect a little bit, but it will still granulate. Um, Loretta, yes. Uh, um, don't worry about joining me halfway through you can always go back to the video section of facebook or you can catch up with it on my blog if you ever miss any of the information but i'm only actually using one color so this is the schminker super granulating watercolor in galaxy black so let's give it a bit of a dry obviously if you're working on something similar to this at home you will dry it a lot better than i'm going to do flip it over so that I can dry it from the back as well that's why I never ever stick my watercolor paper down Brenda's asking if I'm working on a flat surface I have got my board tipped up a little bit there's lots of reasons for me doing that mostly because it means that I don't get my head into shot so that lovely people like Gary don't have to shout at me for getting the top of my head in and you really don't need to see my roots anyway so let's dry the back let's dry the front Mick is um, writing some beautiful poetry as always uh, Catherine just said it's not on the learning to paint page do you mean my uh, video I don't tend to post them on the learning to paint page they tend to go out on my Alison Seaboard page because learning to paint page is all about you not all about me and that's why i do that um my friend gave me a bottle cj smith is saying my friend gave me a bottle of gum arabic and i don't know how to use it ah um hold that thought because i am thinking about doing a gum arabic tutorial as part of technique tuesday if you can uh, hang on just a little bit maybe a couple of weeks i will try to work that in and carol is in the room too good morning lovely now, because this is a piece of Saunders Waterford paper, you do need to reshape it after you've uh, accelerated the drying. And I haven't dried it particularly well, which is why there's a little bit of a bend in it. But you will see me on several occasions holding down my piece of paper so that um, 
as it cools, it uh, dries a bit flatter. And it's not too bad. It's not too shabby for today. Uh, B uh, is in the room. It says, good morning, Ali and family. <laughs> Thank you very much. What size paper is it, please? So this is an eighth size piece of Saunders Waterford. So basically I took a quarter size sheet of Saunders Waterford, which I think is 15 by 11 inches off the top of my head. And I have halved that again. So it's 11 inches that way by seven and a half. So it's sort of a little bit smaller than A4 size. Um, it's bent up a little bit, but that's all right. That's okay. And uh, because we have close-up cam, would you like to see that granulation in all its glory? Let's get that camera into shot and uh, let's switch to that nice close-up cam. Morning, Margaret. And uh, you can see that granulation. You can see the ultramarine pigment and the um, Luna Black pigment and brain fade then um, mixing together and making that lovely fabulous granulation and you can see my mark making in close up there too so at the moment Magpie is looking a little anemic um, but you've got uh, the lovely granulation of the Schmincke super granulating galaxy black colour going on around it Righty ho, let's get that. So there's lots of um, comments about gum arabic coming in. And uh, don't worry, I promise I will get to it. Um, particularly, I am going to uh, use start using gum arabic as an alternative to masking fluid. But that's another technique for another day. Pippa is asking, does the granulating fluid you can buy work with non-granulating watercolours? Um, hmm. How do I answer this, Pippa? Uh, let's do it as professionally as I can. Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> uh, um, well... The answer is I've never got it to work okay on watercolors I have got it to work on acrylic paints and uh, fabulous people like uh, Anne Blockley and um, Jane Betteridge have used it to great effect with acrylic inks um, so you might want to have a look at their tutorials if you fancy having a go at that but in my experience it's not the same. Uh, Jane is asking, how different is this colour to Luna Blue? Uh, that's a very good question, Jane. I'm going to do get my tutor hat on for you now and say, how about you do a few experiments on a piece of paper and see uh, how the colours differ? And uh, Rosie is saying, Winsor Newton have a useful video comparing gum arabic to masking fluid. Ooh, I may have to watch that, Rosie, before I do uh, my next uh, tutorial. Yeah, it, uh, CJ, isn't this fantastic? You get all of this stuff come out. This is what um, Technique Tuesdays are all about. It isn't just about me showing off and uh, painting a picture. It's about you guys chatting to each other, sharing all the tips, sharing what does and doesn't work for you. Because just because it works for me, doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Right, let's paint this magpie, shall we? Um, I'm switching to my size 4 imitation sable brush now, and I'm going to use this colour much more neat. Much more neatly? That's terrible English. My mother will tell me off. Neater. <laughs> uh, dearie me. Right, let's work back into this magpie. I've got my photograph up in front of me. Just to remind you what the photograph looks like. Here's that magpie perched on a post. Um, so you can see we've got darks and blues and all sorts of things going on. Back to my painting. So I've got my size four brush and I'm gonna use, again, mark making. Don't have to fill it in, yeah? You can dot and dash your color over the surface. I will get close up cam in in a little bit so that you can see that in more detail. And uh, I'm going to use a little bit of water to smudge that colour around a bit more. Back into the colour. And uh, let's use, let's make a magpie really, really dark down in here. Looking at my photograph all the time. Getting that in. I'm going to leave the eye till last. Um, lots of artists uh, sort of vary when they put the eye in. Some people like to put it in really early. 
I like to leave it towards the end because to me it kind of brings it all together a little bit more. Oh, Rosie has even put the link to the YouTube in. Thank you, Rosie. Good tech skills. Marvellous. Means that people can come back and find that. Really good. Thank you ever so much for doing that. Uh, let's get some of that black in over the back. Now we've got this white flash down the wing as well, which we need to leave alone. Ah, TC is in the room, my lovely friend Tracy. Good morning, Petal. Even if you hadn't had your name up and you'd have said good morning, Petal, I'd have known it was you. <laughs> she always, always calls me Petal. Um, say hello to TC, everybody. <laughs> I love the power. Hasn't gone to my head at all. Uh, right, we've got black coming up over the top of the wing and down into that kind of crack between. So I'm using that blending out technique all the time to smudge that color around. And okay, it's probably not as neat and tidy as it would be if I was really doing a study of this magpie, um, but that's not what we're about today, is it? We're about getting some character and using our black paint to smudge that colour around. Uh, what else have we got going on? Now, I'm going to use the thinner version here for these uh, shadows. And yes, in the photograph, it's a little bit bluer. I get that. But it's not going to look any less like a bird because you haven't exactly matched the colours, I promise you. Yes, if we were doing a little bit more with it, then perhaps we would use more colours, but we're not, so we won't. Try not to get upset about uh, matching things exactly. It's much more important that you paint. Um, so Lynn is saying, Jane, I just looked up Luna Blue and it has pigments PBK11 and PB15. So PB15, off the top of my head, I think might be Thallow Blue, but I'd have to double check that. But again, good skills, everybody, for researching and looking things up. Uh, lots of people joining in. Hi, Linda. Good morning, Linda. There's a lot of you in the room. There's 140 of you in the room at the moment. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. You have no idea how much I appreciate your support at the moment. It's very much appreciated. So we're going to get that dark in underneath, up into the white, washing out your brush and smudging it down the page. Uh, let's do a little bit more smudging on that. I think I might have missed the boat with that. Never mind. Again, pfft, doesn't matter. Does not matter. A little bit of extra colour down here on the tail. Getting to the end of that. I don't want to over-describe it because if I over-describe it, then I've got to start making actual feather shapes and, and all of those kind of things. And we don't, we don't do stuff like that. Now it does want to have a little bit of a quick dry, just a very quick one. Um, everyone say good morning to TC, she'll hate that. It's really funny. Um, let's give it a quick blast. Just over the top, because it does dry paler. It does dry paler. Yes, Heather, you're right, aren't you? That everyone shares their knowledge. That's what it's all about. It isn't about keeping it to yourself. If you know something, tell other people about it. That's what it's all about. Right, quick dry. Oh, I probably should dry it on the back as well. Let's give it a quick blast. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. Now, before I add uh, any extras in, let's get close-up cam in for you so you can see that uh, colour and what I've done with it really, really close up. Let's get as close in as we possibly can. Now, it's a little bit darker in uh, close-up cam just simply because it's so close to the paper, it's not letting any light in. The actual colour is much more accurate in the overhead shot but you can see that ultramarine pigment coming through. Um, Janet is saying, just got in and first thing I heard was gum Arabic. Not, uh, not got a clue. I'm sure I need to watch this from the start. Yeah, the gum Arabic was just an aside, Janet. Don't worry, it's got nothing to do with my demonstration today, but it might have something to do with a future 
um, demonstration. So there we go. Let's go back to that uh, overhead shot, get close up cam out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that super granulating colour as neat as I possibly can in its really sticky consistency to the point where I probably need a little bit more of it. There we go. Get that lid back on. And I maybe should have gone for a slightly smaller brush, but we'll, I'm sure that the point on this uh, lovely imitation sable is going to do the trick. So that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the neat black to get the deepest shadows in. So let's get that eye in so you can see. Actually, do you know what? Do you know what's going to be better? It's going to be better if I see if I can paint around close up cam. There we go, then you can see what I'm doing. So I'm dotting that darkest colour in around the eye. And having a look at my photo, maybe want to use a little bit of pen at the end, but we'll see. Now you can probably also see the Jack Russell hair <laughs> that's appearing. <laughs> um, what else do we need? We need it to be a little bit darker around in up and under here. So what we can do is we can put that on really quite neat, wash out our brush and fuzz that out. Um, Rosie is saying the sound has gone. Uh, can somebody just tell me if that is the case? It's all fine and dandy minor at my end, um, but if uh, sound has gone, can somebody flag that up for me? Let's get that in. Uh, Rosie, I think it might have been uh, your tech, my lovely. So uh, smudging that out. Oh, now what is Judy saying? I reared a baby magpie and it makes me hugely sad that I haven't seen him in a few months. Oh, yes, I know. It's that thing, isn't it, of uh, rescuing wildlife. It, it does absolutely break your heart at times. Um, now I've lost me, um, lost me magpie photo. There he is. Let's uh, darken some of that around and about. So we're working on those tones now, smudging that colour around, getting a real depth going. Let's uh, put some colour in on the beak. I mean, like I said, this isn't the greatest magpie painting in the whole world. It's really not. We're just using some techniques to do with blacks. But it does show you what you can do with a black, I think. I need to smudge that out a little bit more because I don't know what was going on there. I've kind of uh, messed. That's better. That's better. And so back in the super neat black and uh, darken up that shadow around the top of the head. I'm actually going to make his head a little bit bigger because I think I've got it slightly out of whack. Deepening up that colour. That's better. Looks better now. A bit more magpie-like. Uh, back into that neat paint and developing those shadows. Now, I think I've left a white space there. I think that's part of the problem. I don't actually want it to be that pale. And we don't use uh, neat paint very often, do we? We sort of shy away from it. We think that we've got to have it all thin and watery all the time, but you really don't. You really, really don't now. Looking a lot more magpie-like now that I've deepened that colour. So I know um, Linda D, who is in the room, had uh, a question. This is kind of where it all started about using about painting black. I think she was doing a uh, portrait of her cat Mischief, and she was asking about how to make her blacks look blacker or which black to use, all of those kind of things. So I'm hoping that this uh, is helping. Uh, enormously with how you might tackle that subject matter. So we'll smudge that black a bit further down. I'm not going to do a lot more to this because my little faffing alarm is going off. <laughs> and you know me and the faff, can't be doing with it. So I will make sure that I get those last little bits of shadow in. I've missed his legs out as well. Don't really want to do that. Get that neat paint in getting that kind of darkest area underneath the wing, but you can see how it needs to be dark to work, yeah? It's not gonna happen if you're tentative with your darks. You do need to make them, as daft as it sounds, really, really dark. So let's get those legs in, uh, get those feet in, and then one last shadow up under here, up underneath that wing, going down into the tail. 
and then hopefully that is looking a little bit more three-dimensional like I said there's an excuse for possibly going back in with the pen there's an excuse for maybe using a little bit of white gouache in over the top to or a white Posca pen even for fluffing up some of the white areas there's all sorts of considerations for doing this but what I wanted to do was to show you after all that discussion last week about black watercolors and were they any good and which ones were they all of those types of things so I'm hoping that gives you some idea I mean to be honest I've, <laughs> I've left a white highlight around somebody shout faffing at me because I've left a white highlight around his eye. I don't know why I've done that. That needs to go. Because it looks like he's had a bad night. There we go, that's better. <laughs> Dear, uh, goodness me. Right, let's uh, get back to uh, front on camera so that I can see you all uh, now that my eyes have adjusted. I hope that was helpful in terms of why you might want to use black, what uh, two colours you could mix together to make a variation in black, gives you a little bit of an insight into those super granulating watercolours and why they're so useful. And uh, a few handy hints, I am hoping with the Morse code technique with using your pen. Now I do hope that you have enjoyed the new technology today and that things are a bit clearer and sharper and my mouth is moving in time with the sounds coming out of it, which was the technology and wasn't just me. And then I'm hoping you enjoyed close-up camera as well, that you can see things a little more clearly. Now, if you've come in halfway or you'd like to go back and view this tutorial again, the best place to find it is over on my website. There's all sorts of things that you can see on my website, but if you find the blog page on my website, Ali's blog, you'll see all of the things that I write about. There's even, if you view it on a desktop or a laptop, there's even a little search bar in there so you could put black or watercolour or search for all sorts of things in there that might be helpful to you. You are very welcome of course to share that blog with anybody that you think might be struggling at the moment or might need a little bit of a distraction because let's face it you do not have to be a great painter to uh, have what have we done three quarters of an hour almost an hour's worth of uh, just a bit of escapism it's escapism for me too um, so share it with them and hope that they enjoy it now thank you so much to everybody who has uh, tuned in today there were 140 of you in the room which is just fantastic and it's so lovely to have your support i will be popping up and down uh, all week don't forget there's so many ways that you can keep in touch with me there's this page the Alison Seaboard uh, artist page there's learning to paint with Alison Seaboard which is my Facebook community that you are very welcome to join and like I said that's not about me that is about you guys sharing what you do and how you do it there's the Down End Farm studio page there's my website Alison Seaboard fineartcouk I'll put the website up um, I haven't quite got to the end of creating a banner for that yet and so uh, apologies if you can just hear um, a bit of noise in the background um, I haven't quite got to the point yet where I've created a banner but uh, I will get to that I promise but there's the website address um, Alison Seaboard hyphen fine art .co.uk you can see that across the bottom of the screen or you're very welcome to email me downendfarmstudio.co.uk now, we, I'll be back again, live broadcasting for you uh, on the Facebook page with Technique Tuesday next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Until then, please take lots and lots of care of yourself, uh, continue to look after each other, and I will see you very soon. <laughs>